In this lesson, we're going to take a look at using Mental Ray to render out your scenes that have shave and a haircut in them. I've got Lesson 34 Mental Ray opened up here, and it's just a very simple scene. I've got um, a little uh, whiteboard here that will be a uh, final gather light here in just a second, or a final gather in, uh, illumination source. I have a very simple light with nothing on it, and I've got my scene with a background. So nothing fancy. I just want to show you how the shadowing and lighting uh, models work. So first of all, let's open up this uh, view here and let's render this back out. And this is with everything set, so I'll show you how we reach this image. Let me shoot out a quick render of this mental ray. One thing I want to discuss before we get to this render, um, I, like I said, this is what we're going to try to achieve. Let me make one tweak to our hair, and that is on the hair itself, I want to go to the render uh, shave globals. And right here where it says hair render mode, once you've chosen mental ray as the renderer, you can now choose hair primitives. Okay, This will give us a um, mental ray primitive, hair primitive for each one of those hair uh, render hairs. So let's take a look at what this looks like once it's rendered. Okay, Here we go. You will notice that it is pretty quick when it returns back the uh, scene. And we're looking at everything at just a very draft, low quality setting. So here comes back our image. You'll notice that by default it will not take on the shadows. If you have the shadows uh, that show up on the back plane and it, it is the shadows of the hair, keep in mind that you probably have the hair shave global set to buffer. Okay. So this is our starting base. Now let's go in there and do some tweaks. So we did set this to the hair primitive. That's one step. Second, let's select the light and turn on ray trace shadows. So I'll go down here to shadows, down to ray trace. Okay, let's take my camera back to where it was and let's re-render this frame. There you can see it's uh, coming back here and we got some beautiful shadowing here in the background. Of course the uh, because the anti-aliasing is set so low we do see some artifacting here but we're going to work on that here in a second. All right, next let's turn on, or actually set this uh, kicker plate up real quick. So I've got a surface shader on it. We're going to go to the out color, and we're going to set it to something bright like red. And I'm going to set the value to 2. Okay. And move my camera back where it was. And now let's uh, set our render settings real quick. We'll open this up. And in the Mental Ray tab, I'm going to set this to Preview Final Gather. Now that's just going to check off this Final Gather setting. Let me open up the Final Gather attributes here and open up the options. And I'm going to turn on Use Radius Control, and that way I can set my min and max radius. So I'll set this to uh, 0.5 and 5 and a filter of 1. Okay, those are some basic settings. Again, if you want to learn more about Mental Ray, we actually have a whole kit dedicated to just Mental Ray training. All right, so let's uh, take a quick render of this. We should see the red tint that appears on this character's face. Okay, so we do have a major time increase in the render, but take a look. There's a little problem. The face has the red tint to it. The wall even has the red tint to it, but the hair does not. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to select the hair. And um, actually, this is going to be in the Shave Globals. There we go. So we'll go to Shave Globals. And you'll notice down towards the bottom here where it says Mental Ray. We'll open that up. And you'll see an option here that says Enable Irradiance. Now, once that is activated, now take a look what happens when I hit Render. Okay, we're getting our initial pass coming back to us. And you can see we do have the red on the face, red on the walls. And we'll take a look at the hair now. And we do see a red tint on the hair. So that's a really quick and easy way of connecting up your final gather to your scene so it takes part in the whole illumination model. Now, keep in mind that our, our values are still low, so we still want to go in there and adjust our our anti-aliasing to get rid of some of the artifacting that we've got like at these wisps here but that's not a problem that's an easy fix and there you go that's how we can get the red tint back into the hair system from our final gather illumination uh, model here and I'll just stop this renderer again we'll go into our settings Oops. 
and up to anti-aliasing quality and we can make adjustments here or we can choose uh, production uh, final production and turn on final gather which will have a lot of our settings preset for us let me see if I can just render a small amount and um, while that's rendering we'll just talk quickly that you can use other rendering systems like uh, RenderMan and uh, RenderMan from Maya it, you'll just either have to export out a rib file or you'll need to um, set it as geometry to make all that work. Let's give this a second here. This is uh, obviously going to take longer because we did crank up those settings. And we'll just let this run for a second. There we go. So you can tell here this is a very high quality final render and uh, we just did that by fixing the anti-aliasing pretty much. So that's how you can open up uh, your scenes and render them in Mental Ray and some of the things that you'll want to keep abreast of as you're putting this together in your own projects.